Ready Made Maths YouTube training videos. Teaching Assistant and Teacher Training for Mental Mathematics in Key Stage 1. Today we're going to be looking at Arithmetic 1 Number Bonds. Good morning and welcome to the very first Ready Made Mathematics YouTube video. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at developing different skills of mental calculation so that when we're working with children all the way from early years to key stage one up into key stage two we're developing a bank of skills that they've got in their heads that they can use so they don't always have to go to pencil and paper i know when i was a child i was taught certain ways to calculate and generally when i was given a two-digit calculation or a three-digit calculation initially it was straight onto pencil and paper that tended to be the only way that I learned at the time. As I started teaching and started getting into mathematics, I started realising there are so many more ways that we can develop children's mental arithmetic skills. That's what I'm going to be working with you on this week. We're going to start today uh, with my first arithmetic, as I'm going to call it. And over this, the course of this week, what we're going to do is we're going to develop four to five different strategies that will really help develop children's mental arithmetic skills. What I'm also hoping is that you yourselves will also pick up uh, a variety of mental arithmetic strategies uh, as well. So that not only when you're working with children, but when you yourselves see a calculation, your first principle is going to be, can I do it in my head? Do I have a way to do it in my head so I don't have to rely on pencil and paper? And I can see something about those numbers that makes the calculation easier to do. Okay, we're going to begin with quite a complicated calculation. If you were to give this to, let's say, a child at the end of year one or so somewhere in year two, they probably look at that and think, whoa, there's a lot of numbers to add up there. How on earth can I get the answer to those really quickly? What I want you to do now, I'm just going to pause the video for a second, have a look at those numbers and decide what might you do to add them up and what do you think a child in year one or year two might do? With a calculation such as this, what you often get are children doing the following. One and six, six and one, that's seven. Seven and eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15 and 3, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 5, what number was I on? What number was I on? 18, 19 and so on. It takes an awful long time. They can make mistakes, they can forget which number they're up to and at the end they've probably got the answer wrong. If they're lucky they'll have added them all up on their fingers and they've got to the right answer. To add those numbers up. As you can see at the end here, you can see all the numbers that have been made uh, with the Numicon pieces, and at the end, I've introduced a Numicon 10 piece. If I was to take, for example, the 9, I take the Numicon 9 piece and put the Numicon 1 piece, so we've got the 9 and the 1, what we end up then is with a number bond to 10. Obviously, I hope we can see there's quite a few others there. Which other ones go together? Well, we can put the 7 with the 3, and the 7 and the 3, I'll take the 3 and the 7, and that will give me another number bond to 10. I could take the 6, we put the 6 with the 4, that will give me my third number bond to 10, the 6 and the 4. So what we got left, we've got the 8 and the 2, so there's the 8, and the 8 goes with the 2. That's made our final number bond to 10, and that just leaves us with a 5. Let's just see what number we've ended up with. Well, we've ended up with 10, 20, 30, 40, and 5 makes 45. Another way that we could show children in year one how to make number bonds to 10 is to use something like the egg box or the tens frame image. You can see here the numbers in the calculation that have now been created using cubes uh, and egg boxes. What I could do is I could take the number one, take that one, and just fill the gap. I've now made a complete egg box of 10 cubes, which is the nine going together with the one. Similar to before, we can see the eight box over here has got two missing. So I take the two from over there, we put them into the egg box, and we've now created the second number bond to 10 and two empty boxes. What have we got left? We've got the six, which goes with the four. I can take the four from over here, add the four to the egg box over here and create my third number bond to 10. And last but not least, we've got the three over here and the seven over here. So I'm gonna fill the gap again, fill the egg box up, I'm gonna put the three cubes into there and create my fourth number bond to 10. That just leaves me as before with the five. I'm gonna take that five over here and remove those two egg boxes. And what we end up with, just like before, is 10, 20, 30, 40, five, or 20 plus 20 plus five. Still giving us a total of 45. As you can see from the board, what I've done now is just a quick jotting to represent what you might do in class when you're getting children to jot and to show they're working out. 
We've put a line from the 1 to the 9, from the 6 to the 4, from the 8 to the 2, from the 7 to the 3, and obviously uh, that just leaves the 5. Again, it doesn't matter what jotting you do, whether you just circle the numbers as you use them, whether you join them together. But if we can just encourage children to, whenever they see a 6, look for a 4. When they see an 8, try and find a 2. When they see a 1, can I see a 9 that goes with it? Because that's going to really help the mental calculation skills, and that's going to develop further, as we're about to see in the rest of this video. The great thing about knowing number bonds to 10 is that those same number bonds appear again and again and again. What we can see here is a relatively straightforward calculation if we're using this strategy for children in year two. We've got 18, 7, 4, 13, 6 and 2. Again, if those numbers were written on the board and you ask the children to calculate uh, the total, the general response is 18 and then on the fingers 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. What we can see here, and again the Numicon makes it really, really clear, is that we can spot number bonds straight away. The 18 at the front and the 2 at the end. If I take the 2 and put it with the 18, we can see what we've now done is we've made a number bond to 20. 18 and 2 makes 20, and if I replace the 18 and the 2 with another 10, we can see that straight away. As we move further along, we can see a 13. Again, in the same way that 3 and 7 makes 10, 13 and 7 straight away, the same 7 goes with the same 3, and we replace the 7 and the 3 with another 10. We've now got 13 and 7, I'm going to move those over here. There's the 13 and the 7, whoop, which now gives me a total of 20. That leaves me, finally, with 6 and 4. Similar to before, we'll just put the 6 and 4 together. We'll put the 6 and the 4 together. That gives us a final 10, giving us a grand total of 20 and 20 is 40 and another 10 uh, is 50. Very, very straightforward as long as we use those number bonds to 10. What I'm going to do now is just let you have a look with the abacus and see how the abacus can show number bonds as they build up. You can see here the one that we've started off with, the 7, which goes with a 3, and that gives us a number bond to 10. Underneath we can see 17, which is a 10 and a 7. Again, also goes with a 3 to make now a number bond to 20. Moving further down the abacus, we can see a bigger number. Got to count the tens, there are three tens and seven ones. If we put that with a three, again, the seven goes with the three, that now makes a number bond to 40. That works for pretty much any number bond, even using the smaller abacus over here. I've just created uh, a number bond where we've got 97, nine tens and seven ones. Put that with the three and we get a number bond to 100. So the key to using number bonds is to always rec recognize whenever there's a three, there's a seven. Whenever there's a six, there's a four. Whenever there's a two, there's an eight. Whenever there's a five, there's a five. And whenever there's a nine, there's a one. Doesn't matter how many tens go before it, you'll always be able to do something with those number bonds and put them together. And if you can encourage children, whenever they're doing calculations, to do the same thing, to look at those number bonds and to look at the numbers and spot where they go together, they'll start to do that all the time. Later in the week, we're gonna look at some little games that can be played at home uh, that children can do with their parents as well that start to develop that uh, a little bit further. What we're going to do now is just move on to actual calculations written out without the mathematical resources. Again, we can use those at any time, so if you want to help children see where the number bonds come from, we can pick a resource up and do that. What we're going to look at now is something kind of year two to three. Got six different numbers to add up there. Can we use that same idea? I'm just going to pause the video for a second, have a quick look what number bonds are going to go together. Hopefully, what we've seen is the 46, which goes with the four to make a 50. We can circle the 46 and circle the 4. We can put the 12 with the 8 to make a 20, because obviously 2 and 8 makes 10. And we can put the 7 with the 23 to make a 30. We'll circle the 8 and the 12. We'll circle the 7 and the 23. We've actually ended up with 50 and 20 is 70 and 30 is 100, or 30 and 20 is 50. And 50 is 100, or 50 and 30 is 80. And 20 is 100. But if we add those three together, we ended up with a total of 100. Moving into a real life problem, with all the problems we've been having in the supermarkets recently, with things running out while we've all been stuck at home, and the panic buying, we've nipped to Aldi, and luckily, there's just a few things left. There's some chopped tomatoes, there's some soup, there's some pasta and some bread. Uh, just a little bit left, that's what we've been able to buy. I've come back with a shopping list, want to know how much I've spent, let's have a see how we can use our number bonds to help us. Hopefully you'll see that six and four again, but this time it's 56 pence, and 34 pence. If we put those two together, the 50 and the 30 makes 80, and the other 10 gives me 90 pence. So the tomatoes and the bread together come to 90 pence. Uh, what we're doing now is we're going to use the pasta 
That and the soup, that's the 48 and the 32. We spot the eight and two, which is our number bond. What we'll do, we'll do 48 and two is 50 and 30 is 80. And that gives us 80 pence. How much do we spend all together? We've got no number bond here. What we could actually do is we could take 10p from that 80, put that with the 90p. So the 90p, we've got a 10p, which makes a pound, another 70, which gives us a total of one pound 70. As an alternative, we can double 80 pence and add another 10. And that's a strategy called double and adjust that we're going to be looking at in one of the later uh, sessions later in the week. There we go. One of the final really interesting things about using number bonds is actually it isn't always add the tens and add the ones. We can use that number bond in quite a few different ways. You'll notice on there I've got the same calculation three times. Imagine we're asking a child to add together 66 and 54. They might immediately spot that six and four and use the similar strategy. We've got the six and the four which gives me a 10 and then we've got 60 and 50. Well hopefully they've got a strategy to work that out but 60 and 50 will give us 110. We add together 110 and 10, and we get 120. But we didn't actually have to do it that way. What we could have done is we could have put the four with the 66. So this time I'm going to use that as a whole number. The 66 goes together with the four. That gives me 70, and that goes with the 50. Again, 70 add 50. Seven and five is 12. Seven tens and five tens, 12 tens are 120. But actually, the easiest way out of the three would probably be to keep the 54 as the whole number. And this time, put the six with the 54. That gives us a 60. We've already got another 60. We have those two together and we do end up with 120. So when you get a two digit calculation, you've got three different options. Have a look at them. Which one's going to be you know, more preferable? Is it better to do the tens and the ones? Is it better to put the ones with one of the numbers or is it better to put the one with the other. I'm going to give you an example of that to have a look at in a second. Let's just see how you do. So you can see here the example that we just looked at on the board of 66 and 54 adding together using number bonds in three different ways. What I'd like you to do is to have a look at a similar calculation 78 plus 82. In a second pause the video try adding together 78 and 82 using number bonds in those three different ways and at the end just decide which of those ways do you think uh, is the most preferable. So if you pause the video now, please. And there we have three different ways. The first one, which is probably the hardest of the three, is to put the 70 and the 80 together. That will give us 150. We could do double 70, add 10 for that. And the 8 and 2 is 10. And again, add those together to make 160. The second option, which I think is my favourite, is to put the 2 from the 82 with the 78. And that gives us double 80. The third option, which again I think is a relatively straightforward one, if we put the 8 with the 82, that gives us uh, the 90. Add that again to the 70. 90 add 10 add 60, uh, gives us 160. Uh, whichever you prefer, it doesn't really matter, but there's three different ways, and you can choose the one uh, that appeals the most depending on which calculation you're actually doing. Now, take a look at this calculation. Four numbers as before, but why is this one different? Again, if you take time, pause the video, have a look at the numbers. Where are the number bonds now? What you can hopefully see with this example is that rather than looking at the ones, the number bonds are now in the tens. The 70 goes with the 30, that gives us 100. We could add the 60 to the 40 to give us another 100. And then probably the best thing to do is to put the two eights together to make 16, we're now at 216, add the 4 to give us 220, then add the 5 to give us a final total of 225. This is the sort of example that works really well with children in year 3 so they can visually see how the numbers go together in the tens. Looking at the 70 you can see it's 50 and 20. How much more do I need to make 100? Well I need 30. Here we have a 30. I take the three tens, I put them over here and we end up with another 100. We can exchange that now. Put the 10 tens together and exchange that for 100. We now look at the 68 and hopefully we can see straight away 5 tens and 1 ten. We need another 4 tens to make 100. 6 and 4 is 10. 10 tens are 100. And again, we can replace with that. Now looking down at the 1s, we could see there's various strategies we could use. We could get the 5s together or actually we could use doubles. We can see an 8 here and if I take the other 8 and put the two 8s together. 8 and 8 is 16, and we can see the 4 over here, we'll take 2, 
and another two, and that gives us two tens. Those two tens can be exchanged for two tens. We have, then have a five left. Put them all together. 74 plus 68 plus 35 plus 48 is 225. Each day, we're going to finish the sessions with a couple of little challenges for you to do. The first of today's challenges is to add those six numbers up there using a combination of the strategies that we've been looking at over the course uh, of this video. Obviously, we've been looking at number bombs in the ones and number bombs in the tens. What you'll see there uh, is a mixture of the two. There's probably several ways uh, in which you can solve that calculation. That's the first uh, challenge for tomorrow. For every session, uh, with the work that I'm going to leave you to have a, have a go at, it would be absolutely superb if you could send any of your jottings or any of your working outs uh, to readymademaths at gmail.com. Perhaps grab a screenshot of anything that you've been doing, send it off to me and I can use maybe a couple of the examples in tomorrow's video material. The final challenge I'm going to set you today is using the ready-made maths number board. What I've done is I've slightly rearranged the numbers from how they were initially set up. And the final challenge of the day is just to basically look at the first half of the board from 49 down to 55 and just to see how quickly can you add up every number on that board. In order to do that, you'll probably need to use the ones rather than the tens, but obviously, if you want to use the tens uh, instead, uh, you know, by, by all means, feel free to do that. For example, looking at the first number, 49, that could sensibly go either with the 11 uh, or with the 21, using the number bonds uh, in the ones. Alternatively, if you wanted to put the 49 with the 63, you can use a number bond in the tens uh, to make a 100. As I say, have a little play. There's lots and lots of ways that it could be done. I would absolutely love to see uh, the different methods and strategies uh, that you're using to solve these problems. Well, that's the end of the first of the Ready Made Maths YouTube Mental Mathematics videos. Do come back tomorrow when we'll be looking at a second strategy. Um, and also, if you want to go a little bit further uh, in number bonds, do follow the second YouTube video that's also been posted today, which starts with two digit numbers and then builds up into three digit numbers, four digit numbers and decimals. Thanks very much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow.